look in the mirror at that part of the body that you're not the most comfortable with. And instead of saying like you hate it or you don't like it, when you decide to work with me or any other stylist, that's just your area of consideration. That's how I like to reframe my body parts. We all have this moment in our life where we've made a decision that wasn't completely serving us and we're going through a transition that we're starting to see that. And that's the moment where we're like, oh, fuck. Now I can dress to that woman that I am. Hello, lady, and welcome to the Styled for Life podcast. It's your girl Katie here, and that's what we're here to do, right? That's what the Styled for Life podcast is all about, is styling your life for the fucking dream life that you are craving. I just had a big epiphany on that this week. And I'm constantly, I think that's what this whole journey was around, right? It was, I truly do have the agency over myself and my life, and I don't have to listen to anyone else. So my intention with this podcast and why I show up every week is to share those things. It's why I started the podcast in the beginning, and it's why I shifted it to Styled for Life, because it truly, truly is the game that we're playing of living the life exactly that we want without following the rules if they don't apply to us and creating our own rules. I'm feeling super fucking inspired for this episode. I've been like writing it in my head all day, so I know it's not going to be as good as it is in my head, but we're going to go with it. I just had this big aha moment. So if you guys listened last week or if you're following me on social media, you know that it's my season. It's November. I'm celebrating. I still have a fucking September calendar I need to take off my wall because every time I look at the date, I look up and it's right in front of our podcast. It's November and I'm celebrating. The podcast is three years old. Katie Just Styled is two years old. And I just can't fucking believe it. And... I, I realize that we're in Scorpio season, but for I didn't realize this. And so I was listening to another podcast and they were talking about their business and the astrology sign of their business based on when it was birthed and its personality. And I know it sounds weird, but like the business does kind of have its own personality, even though you are the business, but you're not the business. I don't know. Hear me out. But I know cities have zodiac signs. When I went to New Orleans for my birthday this year, New Orleans' birthday is the day before my birthday. So technically, when the city was founded or declared the city of New Orleans on February 10th, then it makes it an Aquarius. So Katie Just Styled and the Style for Life podcast are technically Scorpios. And I was like, how funny is that? Um, That I have so much clarity around this. Um, And every year this year, I feel like I just feel so amazing. So I'm really excited for this episode, and I feel like this episode is going to turn into a two-parter, even though hopefully this episode is not going to be too long, because I really want to go deep on this episode, but I don't want to do it in one episode, because this is a lifestyle. This is not just like banging out content every week, show up, listen to me talk for 15 minutes. I am here for myself and for you to create a lifestyle. Like, it's the fucking journey. It never ends. We're just constantly peeling back different layers, so we really have to enjoy it. And today's episode is around finding your style after motherhood, because where the fuck did it go? Did you birth it out with the baby? Because that's what it feels like. Uh, Stop me if I'm wrong, but if you're anything like me, You lost little pieces of yourself along the way, and there's that big pivotal moment, and a lot of us blame it on childhood, because childhood is one of those experiences where there's a fucking before and there's an after. It's like any big, and I use the word traumatic, experience in our lives, there's a moment before and there's a timeline after, and you are not the same person. But I want to explore that today because you are allowed to bring pieces of yourself back that you liked of the woman you were before you became a mom. So I'm really excited about today's episode. And as I said, I want to chunk this down into two really tangible episodes to take away. And I want to create space for you guys to reach out to me. Let me know what resonates with you. Like every week I get my 
loyal followers. You guys know you are. Send me messages, DMs, and we talk about the podcast and what resonated and what didn't resonate. So I want to hold space in between these two episodes. And this is another reason I want to chunk it down into like a part one and a part two around like your style after motherhood. Because you might be thinking like, oh, well, my kids are X years old. Doesn't fucking matter. You are always working on your identity as a mother, probably most of your life. But um, all the women that I serve are in different parts of their journey. So I have women whose kids are in college, and then I have women whose kids are still running around, giving them pink eye from daycare, right? Running the whole gamut. And then I'm kind of in that middle space, right? Like I have a kid that's getting ready to go, well, he's 13, but he'll be in high school next year. And that's all I'm thinking about. It's like, Jesus Christ, this time next year, you're going to be doing this. Or in my five-year plan, I'm not that I have one, but you know, when people say that, I'm like, well, fuck five years, you'll be in college, right? So, but what I've learned through this journey of serving women of all ages and different phases of life and different walks of life is we all have these real pivotal moments in our lives where we're trying to find ourselves again. And in somehow in some shape, in some way, we've been re- rebuilding those moments since we became moms. It's a physical, mental, spiritual, emotional any other ills that we can come up with, moment in your life where everything pivotal, <laughs> that everything changes. Like the world flips on a dime and nothing's ever the same again. So I'm really excited to hop in. So that's what today's episode is going to be about. Really quick, <clears throat> because it is my month and we're celebrating my fall style guide, how to shop like a stylist and all the things for fall, your fall staples, your fall trends, how to find your style, some my basic um, process boiled down into this book with done for you alpha formulas, shopping links that direct to the retailers, mood boards, all the things done for you is on sale right now, flash sale, 50% off. So the book is $29. So I think it comes up to like $14.50. So if you haven't gotten the book yet, go grab it, code celebrate. All right. And I'm just going to put this into the ethernet or whatever this is, the universe, the energy here, because I'm feeling it very much so. And it really was birthed out of this idea of style after motherhood and every single woman I talked to. This journey is something we have to do all the time. It doesn't end. Like when women work with me for three months or in, and then we do some really deep work for three months and then maybe they come back in another three months because the seasons have changed because for their clothes. But the work around our style, who we are, how we want to dress, how do we communicate, ensuring that we're constantly dressing for ourselves and not others, that's a consistent process. So with that being said, woo, you're going to hear it for, here first. In January of 2023, I am going to launch a Style Squad membership because I believe that style is such a fundamental fucking part of who we are, who we are and our souls and how we self-express that it should be accessible and consistent and something that we're constantly using as a tool and a guide and not from a vain standpoint. And my fucking mission on this planet is to make sure that this is incorporated as a part of our wellness and not seen as something completely fucking vain because it's physical. Because exercise, I feel like, is starting to shift away from that. And I believe what we wear and how we stay motivated to do those things should be part of that too. So you heard it here first. I have no idea. It's going to be the Style Squad membership. More to come. I'm just putting it out there. Planting seeds. Scorpio season, baby. Everything's being birthed right now. Um, So let's go. Let's talk about style after motherhood because this, it, for me, is the impotence of this. When women come to me, I say, who, like, what are your style feelings? Who are you? Who do you want to be? And I obviously attract a lot of women that like a lot of the things I like. We don't all have the same style, right? We don't all like the same patterns and cuts and silhouettes. But I would say there's this underlying current of like, we all want to be cool fucking hot moms, right? We all want to be the cool hot mom or the boss bitch or the overachiever. If you're not an overachiever, you probably aren't attracted to this motherfucking man gen Enneagram 3 energy, right? I might be too much, or maybe you want to borrow some of mine, right? But I would say there's this underlying current where every single woman comes to me wants to be confident, wants to be that boss bitch version of herself. She wants to be what sexy means to her. She wants to be approachable. She wants to be all these things at one time. And it's really hard to get clear on how to be 
two things that have different meanings. How am I sexy and approachable? How am I a boss bitch and a hot mom, right? That takes a lot of untangling and things to get around. So this is why I really think this work should be accessible and consistent because it's all the time. All right, so style after motherhood. I want to chunk down. I was thinking, well, there's this is why it's going to be two, maybe three. Maybe this is the new fucking episode, uh, the new angle of the podcast. But a couple of episodes on this because I want to like take the first three things that I feel like come up for me on a consistent basis and kind of tackle them and just get us started on these three things. So first one, which could be in a whole episode. We could make multiple episodes on this one, but we're going to try to keep it short and to the point. The first reason that, like, we completely lose our fucking style, sense of style, who we are, is our bodies change, right? It's the most easy one because we can see it. Everyone can see it. They don't have to be in our minds to know that we're having hormonal fluctuations or our mood is shifting um, during our postpartum recovery or it, it I, does postpartum stop? Let me know. <laughs> I mean, in its truest sense, right? But like you give birth and people can see physically how you feel, right? So our bodies change. So now we don't know how to dress it anymore. And we don't want to buy clothes. We don't want to spend the money because we want to fit back in our old clothes, even though it's so fucking unrealistic. And we're not the same woman. We're not the same woman. And you haven't worn a lot of those clothes for months at this point because... The last couple of months, you haven't been wearing them. And if the seasons have shifted, that means you could have missed the complete rotation. I live somewhere where we have four seasons. I could have missed a complete rotation of a whole season. Like my son was born in January. I didn't wear any winter clothes that I wore in the previous year. So then when winter came back around the next year, I was like, fuck my life. Like, what am I going to wear? Right? But our bodies change and that's okay. Not only is it fucking acceptable it's normal. And we are allowed to buy ourselves new clothes that fit. There are ways to work this if we feel like financially we don't want to invest in them. There's tips and tricks we can follow. But at the end of the day, you are fucking worthy of it. No matter what, you literally just birthed a human into this world. If and we're going to, I want to remove money from the conversation because I don't even think it's always money. I think it's like, I don't even fucking know what to buy, what to wear was acceptable anymore. And this really kind of came up for me over this conversation. Hold on. People are outside the door talking. All right. We're back. So maybe I should change the uh, title of this episode to podcasting after motherhood because sometimes, you know, it's hard. Anyways. I've been thinking about this, like, what's acceptable, right? So let's just put away for a second, like, I don't know how to dress my body because now I'm bigger and then, like, what looks good and I want to cover myself. And, like, you can Google any style trick in the book, right? You can Google how to cover my lower belly and how to do these things. But for a second, I would love to talk about how normal and acceptable these things are. And this came up. I did a post... A whole post, yeah. A post in the feed about this last week. I didn't email about it or anything like that, so I wanted to explore it on the podcast, too, is before I had a kid, would I have been worried about my camel toe? Probably not. Before I had a kid, what I don't, I don't want to say I wasn't worried about my lower stomach because I probably, not probably, I definitely had issues with my body before I had a kid. Having a kid exasperated them because the issues that I thought I had with my body. Now, I really hated my body. And for me, it was stretch marks. I had really bad stretch marks, still do, after having my son. Um, and it was completely unacceptable for me. And they were completely inappropriate to show. And I had to really, really, really work through that. But last week, when I was at that fashion show and I had on those leather pants and for whatever reason decided to cross my legs and one of the best photos that was taken of course it wasn't actually the first thing I noticed I don't even think it was the second or the third thing I noticed it was really once I started to completely analyze my body did I see the camel toe and I was like you know what everybody gets it shit happens that woman right there that woman right there, she's a badass bitch. She just did some shit that was scary and she survived and she learned. And her, my confidence, I feel like the fucking Grinch, like my confidence grew five times that day. Who gave a fuck if I had a camel toe? So what I want to say around like our style after 
because I can't fit everything I want to say around how our bodies change and finding our style after motherhood. But I want to just give you permission, if you need it, to accept that it's normal, um, it's acceptable, and it's completely fucking okay. And you are worthy and deserving of wearing anything that makes you feel amazing after you have a baby. Anything. But where I really want to take this is how that moment comes, that moment happens, and then we're like, oh, shit, I'm a mom. If you didn't shop, right, because you already are having this relationship with your body, right? And I don't believe that we are our bodies. I believe we have a conscious experience in connection with our bodies, and you have to learn how to have a loving relationship. It's a very fucking committed relationship, and you need to learn how to navigate it. The world shifts on a dime after you have the baby, right? Your body shifts, your body changes. If you didn't shop at J. Crew before you had your baby, you don't have to shop at J. Crew after you have your baby. If you didn't shop at Chico's or Talbot's or wherever the fuck before you had your baby, you don't need to shop there after. You don't need to shop there because you're 40 or because you're 50. You are allowed to shop wherever you want. So again, we're going to take and put dressing for our body shapes to the side because that's a completely different episode. I want to talk about the mindset shifts that happen here after we have the baby is one, just being okay with our bodies and that they've changed and it sucks in. Like if the person has a problem with your camel toe, that's their fucking problem. Cause guess what? They're actually the ones that have to look at it. Like I joke about, like I have two neighbors that have immaculate yards and they already got their Christmas lights up. And from where I sit, my vantage viewpoint, <laughs> that's amazing. Cause that's what I see. I can't see my yard when I look out the window. Uh, that's their problem, right? So, like, my camel toe is not my problem. That's your problem. And you shouldn't have a fucking problem with it because you shouldn't be looking at it. My fuba, my lower belly from having a kid, again, like, mind your own fucking business. And chances are, not even chances are, 100%, no one, well, someone I'm sure probably did. Okay, so we'll go with 90%. 90% of the women that saw that picture that I posted with my camel toe, their first thought was not look at Katie's camel toe in those other pants. Their first thought was like, hopefully it was something nice. Like, look at that bitch doing her thing. But they didn't get there until I pointed it out. We as humans are so much more worried about ourselves than anyone else is worried about us. Now, we know that we're judging ourselves constantly, so we feel like other people are judging us constantly, and that's kind of how we stay alive, right, is we're constantly analyzing and judging situations to make sure that we're going to be safe. So give yourself some grace around that and move on from that. But let's get back to shopping and where to shop. <clears throat> you have permission to shop at whatever fucking retailer that you want to shop at. To this day, I still enjoy shopping at Express. I don't care what anyone says. I think for the price point and the style and the silhouettes, it's my jam. I can get an amazing black t-shirt and distressed jeans or white leg jeans or fucking whatever jeans I want from there and they're going to fit. Um, I am way into fashion. So would I love to be able to shop at like Versace and get all my clothes tailored? A fucking course. I would love to have that experience. But it's not like the reality that I'm living in. It's not my priority at the moment. I have other priorities on where I'd like to in invest my time, energy, and money. But I genuinely, at the end of the day, know that Express is a go-to brand for me. I've had women whisper to me in public that they still like to shop there or, wow, I haven't shopped there in years. Because there's some story that we have in our head that clicks and is like, okay, so now I'm a mom. I can't dress like X, Y, Z. Why? Like, why? I did it too. This is why I'm speaking on this because I did it too. Why do we feel like we have to stop, right? I didn't shop at these places before I had kids. I don't have to fucking shop at them now. And if everything else is changing in my world, why wouldn't I go back and pull on the things that I know that I like that make me feel good? Maybe I won't like them anymore after I have a kid, but that's okay. I'm not going to know until I try. Maybe your quality and clothing has gone up since then. And then there's another level that you want to shop at. Maybe there's a brand at Nordstrom or like a mid-tier designer that you enjoy so much more. 
go knock your socks off. Maybe you'd like to get the good American jeans that are in the hundreds instead of like the multiples of hundreds instead of the express jeans. Knock your fucking socks off. But if you've just had your first child, and your priority and time is focused somewhere else, and you don't know if you like those genes yet, then, like, what's wrong with sticking with you now? What made you feel good in the first place? Nothing. Does it hurt to go up a size? Yeah. And again, totally different podcast. But feeling amazing in your body and clothes that fit you and look good is going to get you any goal quicker than wearing clothes that make you feel like shit or that have holes. Which then leads me to my third point of motherhood and our style and how our style shifts after having kids is we then do this game. And if you're not guilty of this, please email me or DM me and tell me how you've cracked the code because I would love to know. Where we are on this journey of being a quote unquote good mom at the expense of ourselves constantly. Constantly. I think depending on who you are, we're all at different levels of unraveling like what this means for us. But it's like this unwritten rule somehow that like once you birth the baby out the body that you then for the rest of your life, that's why I said this can be, you can be like 18 months postpartum or a kid that is 18, that you need to sacrifice every piece of your life until that kid go, moves out. I don't know because my kid hasn't haven't moved out yet and I haven't completely solved for my mom guilt. My mom guilt, if I'm 100% honest, was probably my first, it was, it was I, I'm, I can't even talk because I'm stumbling because I know this is the truth. That was my intention around my very first podcast. When I say my very first podcast episode was around me creating a life I want, it was. But the pain that I was running from was mom guilt in every sense of the word, in every area of my life, and in clothes. I see myself do it in clothes. I see myself do it now in clothes. And I've definitely witnessed myself do it over the last two years of becoming a stylist and saying, I believe in this. I want to do this. and I'm allowed to do this. So I, like most women, right, have the mom guilt. And I'm like, I got to do everything for me, can I? I'm doing anything for myself, right? And unpopular opinion, popular opinion, like whatever. This is my reality. It's my podcast. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Um, that was a reality that I can speak to. It's the women that I attract and the experience that I have. I do have clients that don't have kids, right? But we all have this moment in our life where we've made a decision that wasn't completely serving us. And we're going through a transition that we're starting to see that. And that's the moment when we're like, oh, fuck. Now I can dress to that woman that I am because now I know who she is and I've gotten back in touch with her. I'm ready to get back in touch with that side of her. But let's talk about underwear. So I did a reel, I don't know, at this point months ago, and did an episode and talked about whole, the five things killing your confidence. And one of them was holy underwear. And in the world of small business and content creation and promoting your business publicly, consistently, you're always like, have this thing where you're like, oh my God, this is so amazing. And it's so deep. And oftentimes it's the holy fucking underwear post that gets the most traction. And you're like, really? But I think it's become, because it comes down to the most basic points of our life. And the holy underwear is this. How many of us, raise your hand or, you know, obviously you can't, I can't, I can see you, but how many of us have a holy underwear, stained underwear, ripped underwear, Underwear that's older than a year, sitting, and not that anything's wrong with underwear than a year as an adult, let's say a couple of years, sitting in your underwear drawer currently. How many of us have a bra? And we'll include bras in this too. A bra that doesn't fit. Oh, fuck. I'm so guilty of that. A bra that doesn't fit. A bra that's worn out. A bra that's underwires popping out or hanging on by a thread sitting in your drawer. Again, please DM me and tell me your secrets if you don't, because I, I need you in my life and I need your lifestyle tips. Now, let me flip this around on you to so my mom's listening. Do your kids, do you allow your kids to wear holy underwear, poop stained underwear, ripped underwear, underwear that have no shape? Or do you buy them new underwear probably every single year? And not just because they're getting bigger, 
So don't tell me, oh, yeah, well, they don't fit their underwear. Because there have been years where my daughter and or my son could continue to wear stuff. But the second that those under- underwear get holes, those underwears rip, or like one of my kids shits their pants and we can't get get it out, I'm not making them wear those fucking underwear anymore. I'm throwing them away because I want to be a good mom, right? God, I can't put the most precious human in the world in holy fucking shitty underwear, but I can put myself in holy shitty underwear. Well, hopefully they're not shitty, <laughs> period stained. <laughs> underwear, like, come on, right? Like, we are allowed to do this. So I was just been thinking about that lately and how we will block ourselves from doing these things for ourselves that we will obviously and easily do and for other people in areas of our life. So these are my thoughts initially on how we start to lose our style and a couple of like aha moments to start beginning to reclaim it, right? I want to do a big part two on this episode of like how to get super clear on what your style is and share some real styling tips and exercises that I've been doing with my clients on getting reconnected to that woman. Because I think a lot of it is this journey of losing ourselves. But for now, because it's a lot of work to do, for now, I want to leave you with like accepting that your body is going to change and is never going to be the same. Look in the mirror at that part of your body. I want to give you a language term too. Look in that mirror and the part of the body that you're not the most comfortable with. And instead of saying like you hate it or you don't like it, when you decide to work with me or any other stylist, that's just your area of consideration. Nothing's wrong with it. It can be neutral, but we're just considering that right? So like, that's how I like to reframe my body parts, right? When I'm styling my body. So I'm going to consider my bust size and do I look top heavy in this outfit? I don't hate my boobs. I actually have an amazing relationship with my boobs. I'm very aware of them looking top heavy and feeling like I'm looking like I want to fucking fall forward of them in certain outfits and things like that. But I'm considering them when I'm styling myself. I'm considering not letting my shape look really boxy and bigger than it is. And I can speak from actual fucking literal goddamn experience. When the pandemic started, I was easily probably like 130 pounds. Now, I don't know, because I honestly stop fucking weighing myself because it stresses me out. I just don't want to feel like that. I just pay attention to how my clothes fit, how I feel on my clothes, and I'm all in on the energetics of my clothes. I am easy. Last time I weighed myself, I was around 147. That was way before the fashion show. That was way before the Mexican I just ate for lunch. That was way before. So who knows? I could even be creeping up into the 150s at this point. Easily 20 more pounds. But I am living fucking proof that a couple of things actually work. One, baby stepping. Two, really just following your dreams every day, little teeny bits at a time. And three, fucking dressing to build your confidence. I had a big goal to lose the 20 pounds, lose the 20 pounds. When I first started my business, oh my God, I got to lose the 20 pounds. My business won't be successful because I've gained the 20 pounds and I don't look good in my clothes. But that started being mirrored back to me really quickly, right? It was a lot of like, well, I want to work with you, but I want to lose the weight. Should I lose the weight? <clears throat> and people probably think I'm full of shit when I'm like, no, I think you'll actually lo- love your body more once you begin to style it. The relationship I have my body with my body today, oh my God. I just talked to someone the other day. Um, we've been doing some working out together, and I said, honestly, for the first time in the last two years, I guess it's been almost three now, I can say that if I don't lose it, I'm not focused on losing the weight. I want to be consistent and working out every day because it makes me feel amazing. I feel like I'm on fire. I know that I am changing my life. And by changing my life, I am changing other people's lives. And I am literally helping women have confidence in an area they have not had confidence in. And I feel fucking great in my body. Like when I look at my body, I'm like, look at you because I have invested the time and energy and money and getting so clear on what pieces of clothing make me feel amazing and communicate on the outside 
who I am on the inside has nothing to do with being vain. Maybe a little bit, right? I thoroughly enjoy it, but in my heart and my soul, I don't feel that. I feel that I am communicating who I am before I ever open my mouth. And I feel like I'm the most connected to the truest version of me. And I feel like I have the most confidence I've ever truly had at any point in my life, especially in the last three years. So accepting our body, accepting our camel tones, accepting my flat pancake Lee Jean's mom ass, accepting those things and being okay with those things is a lot of the work after uh, for our style after motherhood. So reverse the language, look at yourself in the mirror and literally look at those stretch marks and be like, damn, I love you stretch marks. Like look at them and touch them. Don't just be like, yeah, okay, like my stretch mark. Like fucking look at them. Are they really that bad? Like look at them. I've really been like looking at my ass in the mirror because I feel like I have such a weird shaped ass. And I'm like, man, look at that ass. That ass has done some amazing shit, right? It's totally changed the game for me. Like totally. My only reality is the reality that's in my head, right? So whatever works for you, because my reality is not anyone else's reality on this whole planet. And you're allowed to shop wherever you like to shop. So if you like to shop at Express, if you like to shop at J. Crew, if you like to ta- shop at Talbots, I'm not shitting on any of those brands. Those are just not my brands. Those brands don't fit my vibe. They don't fit my style. And they don't fit my body type, and that's okay. If they fit yours, those are yours, and they make you feel amazing, and they make you show up as the most badass woman. They make you an expander for other people, so other people can look at you and be like, fuck yeah, I want to be like her. Like, how the fuck are you so inspiring? And fucking get yourself some good underwear and some good bras. You goddamn deserve them. Honestly, like, those are the basics. Those are the foundations. I had someone tell me one time, like, Honestly, like, I'm so excited for you to pick out my outfit, but I need fucking new underwear. (laughs) Like, I need permission to wear new underwear. I'm more excited about you giving me the underwear, the undergarment to wear for this event than the goddamn event outfit. Because it's the foundation. It's who we are. It's the home that we build the ground on. It's not the thing. Like, we're allowed to have these very basic things. So DM me on Insta at Katie Allen Stylist and let me know what pieces of this resonated with you. What sections you want me to go deeper and I'm going to share a little bit more next week I think around getting back to remembering who we really are because yes you might not want to shop at those places you used to shop when you were younger or maybe you'd like to learn how to incorporate them with the new places you like to shop which to me is really where the money is. So DM me on Insta let me know what other questions you have at Katie Allen Stylist, or shoot me an email. You can find my um, email on the web address. It's going to be in the show notes too, but Katie at Katie Just Styled. And let me know how deep you want to go into this, what your aha moments are, what resonated with you, what are your questions on how to develop your style after motherhood. All right, ladies, I will see you on the flip side. Bye.